Wow, I don't even know what to say after Hangtown. That was one of the most exciting races that I've ever seen. So much for boring nationals, Jets going to win them all. Nah, not if Chase Sexton's out there. And I'm going to go into all that and then a little bit more. Unfortunately, guys, there's another scumbag in this sport. It's very disappointing, but they've done something to a privateer hero. And I'll talk about that at the very end. And no, I don't like telling these stories. I wish these people weren't out there so I could just focus on my regular content, but nobody else will call these people out. And I feel like if you let them get away with these things, they'll just get worse. So yeah, I have to do it. If you like the channel and you want to support me, use the bet online link that I have in the description. I am an affiliate with bet online and they take really good care of me. And if you're not a gambler, don't go bet just for me. I don't want anyone that's not gambling or doesn't want to gamble or has a problem with gambling to use that link. I want anyone who just enjoys it and does it as a recreation. But if you have a gambling problem, please don't. Just subscribe to the video. We'll leave it at that. You need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers and say, that's the bad guy. So heading into this round, Chase Sexton didn't have a monkey on his back. He had a gorilla. I mean, he had like five gorillas on his back. A year and a half of people telling him, you know, oh, Jet's the man, Jet's better than everybody. And Chase has never once bought into that. He 100% believes he's better, stronger, and can win against Jet Lawrence. Other than Chase, most of this field has accepted the fact that Jet is a generational, ridiculous talent and kind of been like, okay, well, I'll be the best other than Jet, but not Chase. Chase is just not that person. I'm telling you, this guy's competitive. You put him in any other generation, and he's the guy we're talking about dominating. Luckily, we get these two monsters to fight each other, and this is going to be good. Now we have a matchup. Now we have an official rivalry. It takes competition to have a rivalry. And in outdoor motocross, up until this point, Chase hasn't been able to get over on Jet. Not once. He got over, and he got over big. Not only did he win the first moto and capitalize on, you know, Jet's big mistake. I'll get into that in a second. He came out in the second moto and looked to be, oh no, as soon as he went down, it's like, oh, great. Yeah, he gets the opportunity and he fumbles it. No, he went and put in a historic ride to come all the way from the back. And I believe he's the only guy to ever do this early in the year. We've had, I think Jeffrey Hurlings did it at the end of 2017. Ricky Carmichael's done some crazy stuff, but I'm talking about non-mud races early in the season when everyone still thinks they have a chance. I don't think it's been done. That's what makes this so amazing is not that he went from 40th to first, which is crazy on any given day, mud or whatever. It's the fact that he did it when a lot of the contenders are there and they still believe they can win. So nobody gave him a layup. Nobody went, uh, it's just Chase, let him go. They were fighting their asses off and this guy still did it. He believes he's gonna win this championship and he might. And one of my big question marks going into this season was how is the KTM outdoors? In the last few years, they haven't had a lot of success outdoors. That bike has been much maligned. It did really well in Supercross with Cooper Webb, but outdoors, that bike was not liked. People really didn't do good on it. They weren't comfortable and they were all complaining about it. Well, they went one, two in the second moto and first and third overall, two on the podium. And Tom Vial in the 250 class, clearly KTM took that to heart and they've got that thing working really good. Check out Coach Rob's Navigating Amateur Motocross podcast. He's got an episode dropping soon where they brought in the great Andrew Short. Andrew Short is a gift to this sport and a really cool guy. And I'm excited to see what he has to say. So I will definitely be tuning into that episode. So head over to Coach Rob's podcast and check that out. Epic Garage Designs. If you just want some more room in your garage or your trailer or your van, get slat wall. It's very easy to install. It gets things out of the way. They look clean and that slat holds a lot of weight. You can buy the Procore, which holds 200 pounds per square foot. That's like me. I can hang off one of those pins and it won't break. But that would be assuming I am actually only 200 pounds. Eh, I'm a fair amount over that. So there's a good chance I could break it. So Jet Lawrence had a huge crash. I cannot believe he actually got up, continued riding and raced the second moto. But just so you know, that doesn't necessarily mean he's not hurt. I know if I text the manager, they'll say, oh, didn't you see him riding? He's fine. That doesn't mean that. These guys' pain tolerance is like not many human beings on earth. 
They race with broken stuff. They race with broken thumbs. They race with broken cracked legs, torn ligaments. There's always something. So just because he raced doesn't mean he's okay. In fact, the way he faded in that second moto leads me to believe it might be a little bit worse than what they're kind of acting like it is. So, and you know, in the asterisk medical crew, yes, they can do an x-ray, but that x-ray machine inside there is not very good. They have a hard time detecting small fractures. They can obviously get the big stuff, but when it comes to little detailed stuff that could be nagging all year long, you have to go to, uh, you know, an in-house doctor where they get an MRI or CT or even a, even a higher quality x-ray to really find out what's going on with Jet. Hopefully, it all comes back good this week because, man, I just want to see this rivalry. Now it's an officially rivalry because they can both win. It is going to be exciting, and this fight will go down to the end. And it's crazy to see Jet Lawrence, how he made these ridiculous things like jumping that triple step up at Paula, and he always finds something that no one else can or is willing to do, but that's what bit him. He was doing that in timed qualifying. He went out there. He had the whole shot. There was no need to go for that triple, yet he chose to anyway. Was it ego? Was it confidence? I mean, everything he's done has come up aces so far, so why wouldn't this? He will learn as he goes, you know, keep that in your pocket. Use it when you have to, say if you're down or, but I think his ego and, you know, being 20, winning 24 straight motos is like, hey, I love it when people talk about me. I love it when people say how great I am, how I can do things that, are almost impossible to any other human being. And I love seeing it, but it's also about managing risk. And you gotta decide when to do that and when to be like, okay, the risk on this might outweigh the benefit, so I'm not gonna do it. Now, this is a hard way to learn that lesson, but sometimes when you're feeling comfortable, you just feel invincible, and that's how I, I think he felt. That was a harsh dose of reality that he was given at that bottom of that jump. I mean, he hit so hard. And one of the things most people don't give Jet credit for is his durability. Not many people on earth could have taken that crash and got back up and not been seriously injured. When you take a bike, a factory Honda, those things can darn near jump off of a building without bottoming out. To see that thing flatten out when he came up short, that gives you an idea of the impact. I mean, it blew his foot off the peg and then, then he did this side saddle. He still kind of wrecked gracefully. As bad as it went, it couldn't have gone much better. This could be a good thing for Jet. No, crashing and getting hurt never is a good thing. But the positive thing that he gets out of this is that pressure of never losing, that undefeated, that anything less than every single moto win is unacceptable, is gone. Now it's about battling for the championship. He can manage races. He doesn't have to go for every single moto because of this streak. Those weigh on athletes. I mean, look at how many great riders Athletes, they, a lot of these great guys retire early and a lot of them attribute that to the pressure of being on top and maintaining that excellence and how there's no room for error once you've been the best. Michael Jordan retired twice and a lot of that had to do with that same pressure. Ryan Villapoto left. I believe that pressure had a lot to do with it. It's, it's very, very common in the greatest athletes, but that pressure is not on jet now. He is that's gone. That's the one positive you can get out of this horrific crash is he won't have that pressure. He has got to finish the next two races at least second place behind Sexton. He can't lose many more points to Sexton because the season's only 11 rounds. If you lose that many, it's, it's hard to make up. I mean, outdoors crazy. Nothing's ever for sure, but he's got to stay in it until he can get a week off and get healthy. Guys, if you threw away your X-Brand goggles, which I hope you did, maybe you guys should get some new goggles. And if you want new goggles, head over to ridestrap.com. Get yourself some patriotic goggles. If you're shipping anything, use Precision Transport. This is a family-owned company. The Madden family, they're just really good people. They have the best prices and they have customer service. They support motocross, MMA, two things that I really love. But hit them up at pretransport.com. I promise you, they will deliver for you. How about the cowboy, Aaron Plessinger? I'll tell you what, when Aaron Plessinger is on the podium, the sport is better. This guy has so much character. He's fun and he's talented. We for, sometimes we forget because you know he's Aaron Plessinger, laughing, smiling, wearing a cowboy hat. We forget how good he really is. This is a outdoor 250 champion. This is a guy who could win on any given day. Well, if his teammate didn't have this historically crazy run and get past him, on the last lap. With all that said, that KTM looks good for both those guys. 
Look for Aaron to be in the mix in this. Maybe not for wins, because, you know, once Jet's healthy, Sexton. But on any given day, you give this guy an advantage, he will go for that win. And he can. He's that good. And it's kind of funny now. You got Hunter and Jet, and now you have a rival for Hunter and Aaron Plessinger. So now we got a true KTM versus Honda battle. You got two guys from each team that can podium on any given day. And it was funny listening to James Stewart, by the way, who I absolutely love his announcing. I wish James Stewart did Supercross also. He's insightful. While he's not perfectly well-spoken, he gives you his honest opinion. He doesn't talk to you like you're a moron. And I couldn't enjoy his commentary much more than I do. It, it, it's a pleasure. But he brought up a point about the Honda being twitchy. It's funny how that narrative went from the KTM's garbage is scary to the Honda is twitchy. These, these poor teams have to be pulling their hair out because it's just fractions at that top. You're really good, the bike's awesome, or it's twitchy, scary, and causing your guy to crash. And there's just this margin of error is like 0.1%. It's crazy. I still think that bike's really good. I don't think it's twitchy. Maybe a couple of adjustments and they'll be right there. Once they win a couple times, they'll be talking about what KTM needs to do. And I want to give credit to Christian Craig. Christian Craig got 10th place. This is a guy who had an elbow injury and a lot of people were calling for his retirement. I wasn't calling for his retirement, but I'm like, it looks like it's really close or inevitable. I'm glad he's out there. I'm glad he's enjoying himself and he's fighting to race himself into shape, even though his elbow is not 100%. And he's been very open about his lack of prep coming into the series, but he's racing himself into shape. I'm sorry, that's honorable. I like that. Good job, Christian Craig. 10th place. Keep building on that and hopefully you can keep your career alive, man. I'm pulling for you. Another guy coming back from a horrendous, almost career-ending injury is Grant Harlan. Grant Harlan's riding really good. He's finding the form he had last year that got him the national number 23. That injury he had at the designations was bad. Broken pelvis. It could have easily ended everything, but I'm glad to see he's back. And he's actually finding the form that he had because he's been around for a long time. And he, that form last year kind of came out of nowhere. And I wasn't sure after that injury, if he'd ever get back there, man, there was a horrific accident on the side of the track during times qualifying. One of the riders early in the session, and here's what happens when you go out on the sessions. I've done this session. I tried to qualify for Glen Helen in 08, and you need to get a lap in early because you know if you don't get a lap in early, you don't have a chance because that track gets rough. The odds of me making the national were probably out there anyway. I probably shouldn't even been trying, but I did. I tried Glen Helen. You get like you, you went down the start, and then you come around, and when you get that green flag, the time starts. I got the green flag and went for it. And I hit a jump. I thought it was a double, and it turned out to be a double with a tabletop lip on it. Cased it, flew all the way to the bottom, broke my foot. I'm like, dang. So I was out before even logging a time. But you have to go that hard. You don't get a chance to go out there and really check it out. I, I think they give them like five minutes. That's not really enough. I would love to see everyone allowed to ride press day and just get a little bit of lap times in there. Adds to the team's budgets and stuff. But for safety reasons, I would like to see everybody allowed to go out there on press day and get to know the track. So when you're coming over a hill like the one that smashed the mechanic, Tyler, you know what direction to hit it at. You're not kind of guessing because you're so unfamiliar with the track. Now, the guy that got hit was Tyler Mickelson and I think an AMA official. Tyler Mickelson has a badly broken leg. Uh, that sucks, man. I'm sorry for him that that happened. He's a bar X Suzuki mechanic. He's going to be out of work. I don't know his insurance situation. I'm assuming he has health coverage, but he's still out a ton because he's going to miss work. So I'm going to post this up and I don't want to get into an insurance debate with you. I just think Tyler's a good guy and I, I'm assuming he has insurance. I don't know. If you want to donate to him, I'm sure he would appreciate it. He works hard. He busts his butt. Those mechanics in this sport are the unsung heroes. They work so hard for so little. Even though Bar X treats their guys really well, which is why I assume he probably does have health coverage, this little extra will definitely help. But they need to do something about the people on the side. I've been saying this for years. I cannot believe so many people walk on the side of the track trusting that these guys aren't going to hit them. And while it rarely happens, when it does, the consequences can be deadly. Please, 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 with the incident at Paula and the incident at Hangtown, can we invest in a system of lights can we stand people further off the track and put lights on all these blind sections so somebody could just hit a button when there's something in the way and it will go off? Yes, this had nothing to do with the lights, but get people off the track. We don't need them out there. You know, it, it causes for horrible things that cause accidents and 
tracks get shut down because some people are just looking for a reason to sue. Just ask Rich at X-Brand Goggles. And speaking of dirt bags in this sport, I got to bring this to light. My guy, Matt Burkeen hit me up. So Triangle Cycles was a victim. They were, uh, they're a really good motorcycle dealership. They were, they had a bunch of bikes stolen with this, you know, break in. They had video of it. We posted it. We're trying to find the people that did it. But then there's more to the story. And th this sucks to turn a victim into a bad guy. So I believe it's Rusty Reynolds is either the manager or owner of the store. So Matt Burkeen had a bike there on consignment. It was one of the bikes stolen in the break-in. When Matt went to figure out what, what are we doing? Are we, do I get insurance money? Um, are you going to pay me for the bike? They said, no, you're just out of luck. That doesn't sound right because I, that happened to a dealership here in town in Las Vegas and that dealership didn't want to claim it on their insurance. So they paid the guy the consignment money because they decided that it was cheaper to pay him the consignment money than to claim it on insurance. And that's, that's up to the dealership, but it's not Matt Burkeen's problem to make that decision. Matt Burkeen left his bike there in consignment, which means they are now responsible. They've accepted responsibility. They owe him for that motorcycle. I know it's unfortunate that you got broken into, but Rusty Reynolds, please step up. I left you a couple messages and you didn't call me back and I wanted to get your side or make sure you were going to take care of him, but it's been months now and I just reached out to Matt and he still hasn't got anything. So if you could please take care of Matt, I will gladly come on here and let people know you did the right thing. Thanks guys. Subscribe. And like I said, if you want to help me, just head over to Bet Online, set up an account. They take really good care of me. So I appreciate it and I will catch you guys later. But make sure you use that link if you go over there. Because if you don't use the link, it doesn't do anything.